So welcome back to the Learn It channel. Today is lesson seven, learning Fusion 360. We are going to design what you see on the screen, which is a die. It's the singular of dice. Uh, you are going to learn so much in this lesson. I encourage you to watch the details, learn the details, learn the little things in this lesson. And uh, in particular, you're going to learn something new that's called parametric modeling. Parametric modeling. This is what Fusion 360 specializes in. The sooner you learn parametric modeling, the better, and it is time to do so with this lesson. So let's get into it. I'm gonna close this up. We are going to start a new design, and right off the bat, we are going to call it dice or die. Let's just call it dice because well, if I call it die, then YouTube is probably not going to be happy with that. So let's create our sketch. Let's do it on the XY plane. We're going to create a center rectangle and call it four inches by four inches. Let's finish that. Now let's extrude it. We're going to go in the positive direction. We're going to go four inches as well. Now let's start off with the easiest feature of our die. Let's create a one, a little divot on the top of our cube here. We're going to do that by creating a sketch. Let's do it on that surface. And look at this. Our bullseye is right in the center, and that's because we have created a center rectangle. So let's do that. Let's create a center circle, and let's just call this one inch and finish sketch. And then we're going to extrude this, and we're just going to drop it into the part a little bit. Let's drop it in a quarter inch, 0.25. And oh, and by the way, for fractions, we can put in fractions as well. Let's put in one divided by four. It's the exact same thing. As we do so, we can go back to our extrude and there it is, one divided by four or 0.25. It's the exact same thing, minus two. There we go. Now with a die, the faces always equal, the opposites of the faces, I should say, always equal the number seven. So let's do our front face here, and we're going to do three divots. Let's do that. As you see, once I click on the front face, where is our bullseye? Oh, it's down here at the bottom. Why is that? Well, on the top face, we created a center rectangle, so the center was in the exact center of our part. However, when we extruded it going up in the Z direction, we extruded it going in the positive direction. But we would prefer the bullseye to be in the complete center of our part. So let's do that. Let's go back in time. We're going to go to our timeline here. We're going to click on our first extrude. Now you can see that we are basing it off of our uh, origin here and going four inches up, but we don't want to do that. We want to go to our dialog window and instead of going one side, we're going to go symmetric. So look at this. It's going four inches up, four inches down in Z. Well, there's two ways of adjusting it. We want it to be four inches total. So we can go four inches divided by two, then it's two inches up, two inches down, which is a total of four, or we can use something new in Fusion, which is really cool. We can select for measurement whole length instead of half length. So let's select whole length. There we go, four inches. You will notice that our extrude feature here for our, our one, our single divot, it followed the face of our part. Remember, it was first of all four inches high, but now it dropped to two inches high. Remember, we created our sketch on the surface, so it will automatically track that surface. Now let's do our three divots on this, and you'll see what I mean when I click on it. Ah, look at the bullseye now. The origin is directly in the center of the part. So here's a valuable lesson for Fusion 360. If at all possible, always build your parts around the origin and try and mirror them, try and revolve them, try and do everything you can so that the bullseye is directly in the middle, if possible. It doesn't work in every instance, 
but in this instance, it does. And we are going to create a line going from one edge to the next. We're going to press Escape now to get rid of that. And instead of a solid line, let's select it and press X to make it a construction line. So it's very easy to create a circle in the center. But what happens if we want to put a circle directly in between this corner and that corner, this corner and that corner? Where do we find it? How do we do that? Well, there's an easier way. Let's just delete our line. And instead of that, let's press X to make a construction line. We're going to go from corner to corner, corner to corner. There we go. And actually, this is not anchored. So we're going to have to anchor that line by hitting coincident. coincidence. There we go. And then this one as well is not anchored. So we're going to have to go coincident there. So we've created two lines here. Perfect. Now, this is a really cool thing about Fusion. Right now, we're still in construction line mode. So press Escape or X on your keyboard. Now look at this. We've got two lines. As I track my mouse along that line, look at what happens to the cursor. Wow, a little triangle comes up. So what does that triangle mean? Go up to our constraints and you'll see a little triangle there too. This refers to a midpoint. So whenever we see that, we have to select a, or have to create a feature first, but we can hover our cursor of our mouse over the line. And when we see that little emblem comes up, it means we can add a constraint. This is snapping to the midpoint of those lines. Let's do that. I'm just going to create a really big circle there. And let's do the same thing over here. Let's find that little triangle. And we're going to create a little small circle there. And remember the secret here. We can. I'm going to press escape because I'm still on circle mode. I want to go to equal. And I want to say I want this circle to be equal to that one. I want this circle to be equal to that one. There we go. So all three of them are one inch. That's perfect. Let's go finish sketch. Now what do we do? Well, we can extrude. Let's go. We've got to pick each of these little divots. One, two. Say if you accidentally select the, select the face instead, that's okay. Just hit Control on your keyboard or Command on a Mac. There we go. And now we can select this third one. And let's go in as well, minus 0.25. There we go. Let's move over to this face. So if the opposite of three has to equal the seven, the opposite side is a four. So let's make this a five. Again, let's create a sketch on that plane. We're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to create a line that goes from this corner to the center point. And then over to there, we're going to hit X and X. Let's do the same thing. One, two, let's turn these into construction lines. Now look at how easy this is. We're going to create one circle here. We're going to create another circle here. And again, at this point, we can be rather quick. I'm just going to make them of various sizes. Very good. Hit the equal constraint. Boom, boom. Boom and boom. There we go. We've got five. Excellent. Okay, so now let's extrude all of them. One, two, three, four, five. Minus 0.25. Perfect. Let's do the other two faces. And here we're going to create four, right? So I'm going to do one, two, three, Four. Let's turn these into construction lines as well. And let's create four divots. So here I forgot to add a dimension to one of these circles. That's okay. Let's press D for dimension. We're just going to click our circle there and call it one inch. Now we can make the other circles equal to that first one. 
Perfect. Let's extrude it. One, two, three, four. All right, we've got one left. We have to make a two divot now. Let's do that. Okay, we're almost there. So now we've got to go to our bottom face. And what number should this be? Six. That's great. Okay, so here's where it gets fun. Let's pay attention here. So we are going to create, again, we're going to do a few different lines here. And we're going to create two lines here as well. Very good. Let's create all construction lines. And let's put our circles into place. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so I've got to specify the diameter here of one inch. And let's go equals, uh-oh, do we see a problem here? The dimples or divots are too close together. If this were me, well, let's see what it looks like. Oh, well, I would probably want this to be a little bit more spaced or I would probably want the divots to be a little bit smaller. That's a little too close together for me. So here is where we're going to learn about parametric modeling. If you're faced with this situation, well, we have a couple different things that we can choose to do. We could make the dice a little bit bigger. That would space out the divots. Or we could change the divots. But now look at what we've done. We have uh, created this entire dice. We have done, look at all these features in our timeline. It's going to take a really long time to go back in time and change everything. So this is where we're going to go to modify, change parameters. You will use this all the time. Parameters is something that helps us to do parametric modeling. So pin to toolbar, definitely pin to toolbar because we're going to use this all the time. That's what I've done. So you see it up here. So now let's look at our parameter window. It looks complicated, but don't worry. It's very easy to use. So let's think for a moment of all the variables, all the things that might change with our die in the future. So because the width, the height and the depth are always going to be the same, it's a perfect cube. Let's just call our first parameter by clicking here on plus user parameter. And we're going to call it dice size. And let's call it four inches. What else do we have? Well, we have the divot diameter. Right now it's one inch. Let's call it that. So divot diameter. And we're going to just say one inch for now. What else do we have? Well, we have the depth of our divot as well. So let's call it divot depth. And this was 0.25. So that's pretty well it for now. Let's go OK. So now we've got to go back in time and change some things. Let's go to our very first sketch. Here we have four inches by four inches. But remember, we've just created a parameter. So let's change this dimension to a parameter. So let's double click and remember what our parameter was called dice size. So just start typing D I. Oh, there we go. I can actually use my uh, arrows on the keyboard to select my parameter. So let's go dice size. Enter. We're going to double click on that and also go dice size. Enter. Perfect. So now if we go back to our sketch, look what happens if we go to our parameters. I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit. We can change our dice size. Let's hit six inches and see what happens to our sketch. Both those dimensions automatically turn to six inches. What happens if we want to go two inches? 
Well, automatically, instantaneously, it turns to two inches. So right now, we have tested our parameter, and it works great. So let's go back to four inches. Okay. Finish sketch. Let's go to the next item in our timeline, our extrude. So here again, we have a distance. Instead of putting in a static number or a finite number, we're going to put in our parameter. Dice size. Perfect. There we go. Well, let's test to see what this looks like. Let's go to our parameters again. I'm going to pull the dice off to the side. And let's change our dice size to 6 inches. Hey, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Let's go to 8 inches. Now you will notice everything is perfectly spaced so we've done that correct but what do we notice with the divot size as we get bigger with the dice size our divots will get smaller and smaller and smaller so look at this is a 20 inch dice not that we'll ever make a die that that's big but 20 inches all right that's a little ridiculous so let's go back to four inches and let's think for a moment about our divot diameter. It's right now at one inch. Well, that's good. So let's go to all of our other sketches. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're going to go to that one. So instead of our diameter being one inch, this we're going to call it divot diameter. Perfect. Let's go finish. We're going to go to the next one. Let's go to the three. We're going to change the one inch here to divot diameter. Finish. Let's go to our five now. I'm going to turn off those sketches. Okay, so I've changed all of the sizes to a parametric modeling size, which means, let's test it. Let's go to our parameters, and instead of a one inch di divot diameter, let's call it, well, let's call it 0.5. Hey, look at that. We fully controlled all of the divots. Now the six is looking a little bit better, although that's pretty small. Let's go back to 0.75. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's go to, I don't know, 0.8. Let's go 0.9. Perfect. There we go. So we can also change the divot depth. Let's do that real quickly. Oh, that's the cube. Let's go here to, and we could type divot depth here, but look what happens. It actually goes the wrong way. So we have to put a negative value. There we go. Here we're going to go So I think I've got all the divot depths parametric right now. Let's go back to our change parameters and let's test it. With parametric modeling, we have to test often. So let's just change our divot depth to 0.5. And there we go. I think all of them, oh, except for, no, our four is good as well. So everything, I think it is, maybe it isn't. Let's inspect it. Go from that surface to that. No, the four is still 0.25. So. Let's fix it real quick. There we go. Edit feature, and we're going to go minus divot depth. Okay, perfect. There we go. So everything is fully parametric right now. So let's go back to our parameters. Now, we're actually going to go to our divot diameter and go back to one inch. And we're going to do some basic math in our head here. So remember, as our dice size gets bigger, so should our divot diameter get bigger. And it should go in a ratio. Right now, it's in a 4 to 1 ratio. If we do the math, we take 1 divided by 4, and that means it is 1 quarter of this size. So instead of a finite number, we can do an equation. And we can do this. 4, or actually, let's take in dice size, divided by 4. Now you can see that the value equals 1 inch. 
But as we increase the size of the dice, the dice size or the divot diameter will be a quarter of the dice size. So let's type in six. There we go. So look at the value now is at one and a half inches. Now let's go to eight inches. Our value changes to two. So look at that. All our divots follow a ratio of the dice size. Let's go back to four inches. Say, for example, we look at the six and we're like, well, they're still close together. Well, let's create a little gap in between there. So let's take this value and minus 0.1. There we go. So now we've got an equation right here. If we go up to eight inches, look at this. It becomes two inches minus 0.1. So the divot diameters are 1.9 inches. So that's great. Let's keep it like that. Now the divot depth as well. The divot depth right now is a ratio based off of our dice size. So we've got 4.5. That's an eighth the size of our dice size. So let's create that. Let's type in dice size divided by 8. And that equals 0.5. So if it's a little bit too deep, well, let's divide it by 10. Now this is 0.4. Let's divide it by 12. It's 0.333. Well, let's divide it by, oh, let's do 14. Okay, so we get the point here. Let's even, we can even go to 20. There we go. So the depth now of the divots is our dice size, which is four inches divided by 20, which equals 0.2. So this is really cool. Instead of adjusting the divot diameter and the divot depth, those are all based on the dice size. So let's look at it. Let's prove it. Let's create a 10 inch dice. Hey, everything. So everything gets bigger, but proportionately everything remains the same. Let's try a 20 inch die. Perfect. And look at our values over here. Correspond. They, they're a ratio still. Let's do a Let's do a one inch dice. Oh, now it's tiny. But look at our divots maintain the proper aspect ratio. Isn't that great? Let's go back to four inches. We've got ourselves a beautiful die right there. So what have we learned this lesson? Well, we have learned to build everything off of the origin, everything off the center point and uh, go in equal direct direction, symmetric direction, so that we can keep that origin right in the dead center of our part. We can prove it by clicking on origin, and there it is. The direct center, the dead center of our part. What else did we learn? Well, we learned all about parametric modeling. Isn't this amazing that we can change with just one factor, one expression, we can change our entire dice. It looks amazing. Keeping this in mind for upcoming lessons because we're going to use parametric modeling more and more. It's an incredible feature of Fusion 360. Now, before we finish our die, let's finish off with one more thing. We're going to create a fillet. A fillet is a round edge. We're going to pick all of our edges here. I want to pick the edge on the very back, but look what happens. I don't need to rotate my part. No, I can just hover over where that edge might be ah, and we can select it. Let's do the same thing over here. There we go. And I want to create a fillet. Let's just try, try a quarter inch. Now that's great as well. Can we do the math in our head? Let's try and figure out a ratio here. Let's go to dice size, which is four inches. And we're going to divide it by 25. This is actually should be 0.2. So that's a little bit smaller. But that looks great. So now every time we adjust our dice or our die here, it should adjust the fillet correspondingly, which is exactly what we want. We could have created a parameter as well, but just showing you that we can create expressions within our design workspace. So I hope that you enjoyed the lesson today. It was great learning all about parametric modeling, designing this dice together. Great job. 
If you have benefited, if you have enjoyed this lesson, please like, subscribe, uh, make a comment. Tell me how it's benefited you. Tell me what applications you think you could use this in. So we look forward to our next lesson where we'll explore more detailed drawings, how we can interpret them and build 3D models off of them. Looking forward to seeing you next time on the Learn It channel.